Chris. How are you doing today, Omar? I'm doing good, sir. Good, doing good. How about yourself? Good, good. Um, so what was the last you heard about um, how your mother was doing? Uh, I try to call every day, sir, and get at least an update. Um, I understand that we did get some blood. Um, so mm-hmm. far, we're monitoring some shaking or some shock movements that happened and that they were going to do EKGs, I believe. Yep. If you could bring me up to speed on what the results were and what's going on now. Yeah. Um, so the EKG didn't really show much, just that her heart rate was um, high, as it has been high for the last like week or two. Um, the Yesterday there was some concern that she was having seizures, um, so we talked to the neurologist. Um, she's not having any more of those jerking movements today. Um, had increased the uh, had increased the dose of her anti seizure medications. Um, I think one thing we're trying to figure out is uh, one, she's not really um, she's not waking up that much, and that could be just because of all the sedation medication that we've been giving her, um, just to make sure that she's breathing okay on the ventilator. Um, but one thing, uh, a couple of tests that we want to get. Um, one, we want to get a CAT scan of her chest today um, mm-hmm. just to make sure that she doesn't have any um, blood clots in the, in the lungs um, because we're concerned about her heart, um, her high heart rate. Um, and then the other thing is the neurologist um, wanted to get an MRI of her brain um, tomorrow um, to make to kind of see if they can find any any reason for her uh, for her seizures. Okay, okay. So it's undetermined at this point on what's causing those um, jolts to happen. Yeah. He, he told me it was just a, it wasn't a full seizure, so it was a little um, jerk movements. They said. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't seen like any like evidence of seizures okay. on the um, on the EEG that uh, on the EEG that they started yesterday. Okay, doctor. Um, how, how about her oxygen, sir? How's she doing the breathing um, and the likelihood of getting her off a ventilator? How's that going? Yeah, her, her oxygen and her breathing has been pretty pretty steady and pretty stable today. Um, we want to make sure before we start going down on the ventilator requirements, we want to make sure that she's waking up a little bit more. Um, yes. Again, um, I don't know if any of previous doctors have told you what to expect, but uh, unfortunately, we are seeing that people stay on the, the ventilator for for quite a long time, um, and so we um, we just have to be patient. You're you're seeing that more more and more in different cases, doctor. Yeah, yeah. It's just abnormally long, you know. It's sometimes it's, some. It's really yeah. It is. I know it's been a long time. You're, you're thinking that you know getting her off is your only um, hope, but but it's um, typical right now based on the corona cases you're seeing. Um, yeah, they require they usually require the ventilator for prolonged periods of time. We're talking about weeks, um, up, up to like two to three months. Oh my God, I understand, doctor. We're we're patiently praying hard, doctor. That's all I can tell you, man. We'll definitely keep you updated every day. Um, I just have a couple of questions for you because we're going to do the the CAT scan and the and the MRI tomorrow. Um, do you know of any reactions that she's had to contrast injections for previous CAT scans? Um, any allergies, Angie? Do, do you remember? Mm, no. I don't remember um, for mentioning. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So not that you, not that you know, based on yeah, what she, she told you. Yeah, she hasn't really told me anything. I know she, she used to go in for a couple CAT scans once in a while. She would mention okay. if um she was allergic to something or if they, because okay. she has been getting gast- gastrology tests and her GERD test and they've been sure. checking her for stomach issues, but never any chronic illnesses. Um, Corona okay. has really done a number on my mom. Got it. Okay. And um, do you know of any? Uh, do you know of any metal in her body, or any metal implants, any pacemakers, um, any anything like that? Um, I would say no. No. Yeah, I would say no. I do know she had um, like a broken knee at one point, but I doubt she got a metal implant. 
Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any questions for me at this time? Um, um, how, how is um, the fever, sir? Um, so she's still having a little bit of fevers. Um, she had a 100.7 last night. Um, we've given her a lot of antibiotics uh, already. So we talked to our infectious disease specialists and they had recommended um, stopping the antibiotics and kind of see um, and kind of see and kind of just watch her um, because all all the blood work that we sent um, ha and all the tests that we've done haven't really shown that there is like an active infection. Well, um, what do you think might be causing the fevers? It's very odd. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, especially in somebody who's had um, a bleed or a stroke in the head, um, sometimes the brain itself uh, might be. Um, telling the body to mount like a fever response, um, and then that's what we call a central fever. Gotcha. Um, so it's not it's not uncommon in this case. I understand, doctor. Um, do you think this is going to cause for her to need more blood? Um, because we just had to do a transfusion, right, and, right. And, and we're worried, right. like what could be causing her to lose blood? Right. 